Hello friends in Christ, hello children of God, hello families united in that love of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. My name is Father Mike Perucho, Associate Director of Vocations. I welcome you here today on this Monday of Holy Week as we once again break open the Word of God and allow God's voice to speak deep into our hearts. So I invite you to please stand as we begin always with a wonderful hymn praising our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, King of endless glory. Savior of the world, Savior of the world. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, King of endless glory, Savior of the world, Savior of the world. Hail to you, our King. You alone are compassionate with our faults. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, King of endless glory, Savior of the world, Savior of the world. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, while Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. Mary took a liter of costly perfumed oil made from genuine aromatic nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas the Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who betrayed him, said, Why was this oil not sold for three hundred days' wages and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money bag, and used to steal the contributions. So Jesus said, Leave her alone. Let her keep this, this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. A large crowd of the Jews found out that he was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And the chief priests plotted to kill Lazarus too, because many of the Jews were turning away and believing in Jesus because of him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Friends, one of the things we notice about this time of social distancing, this time of being in quarantine or limiting our movement, is that we are grounded or find ourselves pretty much always at home. And in many ways, this can be very stressful, as I'm sure some of you are experiencing. In many ways, we get a little anxious and frustrated, we just want to get out and go about our normal lives. But at the same time, one of the things I want you to think about today is one of the great blessings that takes place because as you look around you, your family is home with you. You are gathering together now more than ever. And that is a great blessing that we are invited into today. In our gospel today, one of the things that takes place after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead is that he gathers at table. He gathers for a meal, for dinner. He gathers in the home of his closest friends, of Lazarus, of Martha, and Mary. And you can imagine what that scene is like. Here was Lazarus, who was once dead, who, was, who is now alive. And his sisters, who were crying and mourning, are no longer weeping. And so you can imagine what it's like there at the home. What's like there at dinner. The joy, the thankfulness, the laughter, the great love that's being shared between all of them. And that, my friends, is what we are invited into today as we look at our own family, as we look at the ones whom we are blessed to be with. In a very special way, even though we never thought about it, these moments during this pandemic are moments of grace. Because one of the things we find is that sometimes we are so busy and isolated in our lives, we get up, we go to school, we maybe have extracurricular activities, 
We come home, we eat dinner, we go to sleep, and it's the repetition of that day. For us who work, similar. We get up, make sure the kids are ready, we bring them to school, we go to work, we pick them up, we come home, make dinner, and then we go to bed. And we repeat over and over and over again. But now, we're integrating those two lives that once were sometimes separate and once sometimes isolated for the majority of the day. And I bring them together in your homes, around your dinner table, which not only is the place of meal, but maybe it's the place where you work and you study. That's taking place around the coffee table as you lounge before a TV and enjoy a movie or a TV show together. It happens around the altar in your home as you gather every day to pray, to thank God for your blessings, and to pray especially for those in our world who need our prayers the most. And in each of these situations, in each of these moments, my friends, we are filled with joy, with happiness, with peace, and with love. And it gets even better. Because if we are like Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, and bring Jesus into our homes as well, to invite him to dinner as we pray, as we give thanks to God, just imagine how much more joy we will be filled with, knowing not only that Jesus is with us, but that he'll never leave us. And knowing in the midst of even our sorrow and despair and even death, that Jesus will give us joy, that Jesus will give us everlasting life. So today, as we continue our day, as we enter deeper into this holy week, may we too be like Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Welcome Jesus into our homes, into our lives, into all we do. And with it, my friends, May we be filled with joy. Amen.